The blessing and curse of being a designer is, well, having to design things. And my fiance has been asking me to design some save the dates for our wedding while I've been procrastinating. But today is the day. So let's get into it. So my partner sent me some stuff as inspiration and I was actually pretty stoked to see on some of the references that were pulled. It's a lot of this kind of Xerox halftone style, cool like punk flyer aesthetic. And for a while I was worried that she was gonna ask to do some kind of, you know, elegant wedding type, uh, you know, the classic style thing, but she's dope like that. So it ended up being a cool style that I feel like I could actually work in. And don't get me wrong, I could do that style too, but it's more fun to do what you like, right? So for this save the date, the main hero image, I'm gonna use one of these images from this photo booth in Berlin. This was great and I think it'll work with this style really well. And also it only costs I think two or three euros to use the photo booth, so it worked out perfectly. Enough yapping, let's get into it. So I just started by setting up my document size, which was four by six inches and did a simple grid and some margins all the way around. From there, I scanned in these strips from the photo booth and started making my selections on the images I wanted to use. I'm thinking this classic just smiling one as the main hero image and then these ones with the beer and stuff as kind of fun little smaller accent images at the bottom of the layout. So I basically just masked each of those out into a rectangle shape and turned them into smart objects. And that was pretty easy. So now we move on to the typography. The design isn't gonna be overly complicated. So I just wanted to start out by writing out all the info I was gonna need to get a better understanding of where I could place all the type. I like the idea of just using my classic favorite sans serif, Noya Haas grotesque, and then going in at the end and roughening it up and adding some distressing effects. I experimented with a bunch of different ways to lay out the heading, our names, the date, and some of the smaller body copy at the bottom. I really, for some reason, enjoy how dates look written as just numbers, and I think that it looks particularly good when you're using these kind of grotesque sans serifs like this, so I went with that. At this point, I also started the rough layout for the main hero image and the three accent images that would complement the entire design. After a bunch of small tweaks and some layout experiments, we were starting to get somewhere. Now I started to test out the halftone treatment on the image, and instead of just using the classic filter gallery halftone, I decided to use Vintone, which is this really cool effect that my homie Duran made. So if you like how this looked, go check that out. I thought the halftone was looking pretty good, so I sized my image into place, and I decided to make the entire background black with the type being white on top. This way, once we print on that really bright paper, the type will be the color of the paper showing through in the negative space. I wanted to mix it up and not just be an all sans serif layout. So for the save the date, I wrote it in this cool black letter font called Chomsky. I also added these nice little accent lines to help the layout feel a lot more cohesive. From here, I started experimenting with the layout of the smaller images, and I decided to have them tilted like this and overlaid on the top of our main hero image with the same effect applied to them. I also added a nice outside stroke as well to their containers. At this point, the layout was pretty much good to go, and I just wanted to go in and roughen everything up a little bit. Doing some ink bleed and distressing type techniques will really help sell this effect and make it feel more authentic to the look we're going for. For the typography, I just added an outside stroke to give it that ink bleed look, and then also added some distortion using a displacement map from Black Market. This kind of makes it off center a little bit and not completely perfect with some movement and just makes it feel a little bit more irregular. I also added that same roughen effect to all the stroked lines throughout the layout, and I thought it started to wrap everything together. At this point, the design was looking pretty good for the front, so I moved on to the backside. Designing the back was pretty easy, and I wanted to keep it fairly traditional and reminiscent of some of those vintage postcard layouts that you see. So I dropped in one I found online just to use it kind of as a layout for my own design. Add in all the lines where they needed to be, and also a nice section for the stamp to go, and then I ended up using that same black letter font to write out postcard. I wanted to make sure the styling on the front was consistent with some of the elements on the back to make it feel a lot more cohesive. So once the layout was nice and locked in, I just added those same grungy effects to the lines and the type on the back. Now we are ready to print. I placed two designs on each piece of paper with the front and the back being in the same spot. The plan was to print on one side with the laser printer and then take them all and feed them back in to print the back side. I'm stoked I get to use the Astro Bright paper for this project. I really like how the black ink on these neon papers gives it that cool punk rave flyer aesthetic. However, this process was honestly such a bitch. 
I had to refill my laser printer toner. And then since this stupid little platform where the pages land is broken, I had to tr try holding it in place the entire time. The pages were also getting hella folded. So I had to do a bunch of test prints until I got it printed correctly, or at least mostly correctly. Once I had a nice handful of them finished up, I used these big books to try to flatten them out before cutting. Once I started cutting them to size, it was starting to look dope and it was really convenient that I had this little slide cutter thing because it helps a lot more than using a ruler and an X-Acto knife. The designs were coming out pretty close to what I imagined and once I got four of the different colors printed out and cut, it was dope seeing them all laid out like that. There's something so simple and beautiful about designing something from scratch all the way through on the computer and then printing it out and bringing it into the physical world. The only last thing to do was show the client. All right, so I have the save the dates right here. I'm gonna go over into Erica's office and show them to her and see if uh, see if they pass the test from the client. Why aren't you saying anything? Am I supposed to be saying anything? That's why you have a mic. <laughs> He's really cute. What are you gonna do at the back? Um, the person's address, and then maybe write a sweet note to every single person. I might not. I might just put a sticker there because that sounds crazy to do for a hundred people. Yeah. But I think that'll be cute. These will go really hard. We did it. The client liked the designs. I just hope she pays the invoice still. Here's the final reveal of the designs. I'm really happy with how these turned out, and I hope you enjoyed watching the process. That's it for now, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.